Hi all, welcome to Racks Infotech. In this video, I'm going to share a couple of Oracle Rack DBA entry questions. It's a part two. Uh, in my previous uh, video, I have shared the part one video. Uh, there I have a couple of questions and answers I shared. Okay, coming to this video. First question is, how would you perform patching activity or how do you perform a patch in Rack environment? In non-Rack environment, we used to use the same command but we we have a different uh, 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 different in grid infrastructure layer different layer suppose this is our rack infrastructure a rack db this you can take it as a non rack db non rack the same server first operating system in standalone database non rack database also operating system rack database we are going to install the cluster infrastructure or we call it as a grid, grid home. And here we don't have a grid home. Directly we are going to install RDBMS, Relational Database Management System. It's a 19C or 23 AI or whatever it is. So there is no grid, uh, there is no cluster or there is no grid uh, home. But here on top of grid or cluster home, we are installing RDBMS. Okay. So if you want to apply the patch, we need to apply RDBMS and grid and which sequence we need to apply. This is also another uh, question, right? First, you need to upgrade or update patch on your grid home. Then you need to apply rack. First is grid home, apply the patches on grid home. Second is RDBMS home. Here in non-rack, we don't have a grid. So we are going to apply the patch directly on the RDBMS home. That is the difference, okay. How we are going to apply the patch? Even in the RD Oracle home or grid home, we'll use opatch tool you can apply the patch and another way we used to have uh, opatch auto is another option opatch auto another tool that you need to initiate it from your root user okay from operating system you need to set the uh, related path and then you need to execute it opatch auto is there that this command or utility will apply the patches on cluster and rdbms homes okay that is the uh, way we are going to apply the patches in rack but in uh, non rack we can use opatch same opatch tool there is no opatch auto okay opatch tool to apply the patches hope uh, you got a clarity and go to the theory part how we are going to apply the patch okay uh, in rack we can go with uh, when your uh, database like uh, services up and running we can apply how it is uh, means so in rack we used to have two node rack minimum okay shared storage that we call it as our database is a shared one if you want to apply the patch on node one you can shut down the node one services and apply it when you are applying the patch on node one node two services is up and running users our business is running use the uh, node two they will use the node two and then services once this is done you can make it up and shut down the node two this fashion mean this kind of uh, applying the patch we call it as a rolling fashion Okay, that option is there. But in standalone, we have only one node, one instance. Okay, one instance, one DB. So you have to shut it down and then only you can apply the patch. That is another question you may get in interview. Okay, so how we are going to apply the patches by using opatch apply the command. Anywhere, like even grid, uh, standalone database, rack database. Okay, going to the second question. What is the significance of uh, ASM? Okay, automatic storage management is the full form of your ASM. Okay, it's a far, if you want to use the storage, storage perspective, we are going to use Oracle ASM. It's It will act as a simply as a database instance, but it is not a uh, as it is of uh, ASM in the Oracle instance. Okay, Oracle ASM is a storage management solution that simplifies the database storage. Okay, it uh, will provide you the Performance and user flexibility, user availability, I mean, how we are going to manage OMS uh, related uh, flexibility and uh, raw devices, uh, how the raw device is providing the performance improve. Both functionality included in your Oracle ASM. It's a part of your cluster software. Um, so you don't need to take separately as part of your cluster uh, software, you will get it. So go through the theory part and then you can understand more about ASM. And what is Oracle Rack Database Services? 
how does it provide the load balancing based upon the database services if you want to create n number of services we can able to uh, use multiple services because as and when any performance related issues happens by using the service name we can uh, try to identify and fix the issue asap okay first we need to understand what is database service that is the question database service it provides a layer of abstraction between your client applications and the database instance okay as i said right if you want to identify which services are connecting using which database service if you are, if the users if you are using multiple applications all are using single service name so in, in that case it is very difficult to identify the bottleneck performance issues right so each application you are going to provide separate database services we can able to identify the performance related issues okay that's where uh, we are going to use the database service how it is going to provide the load balancing means load balancing by redirecting the connections based on availability resources also it is going to provide high availability by redirecting the client connections to an available instances in case of any node failures okay at that time this will help so how we are going to check the uh, service name status srv ctl status service hyphen d and the database name and also we need to provide hyphen s service name okay then only we can able to get the service name from our raw instance okay next question is how do you configure oracle rack for high availability it's so straight I mean straight forward uh, i have uploaded the rack configuration and also uh, how we are going to provide step by step installation instructions you can watch our previous uh, rack uh, related videos on our channel racks infotech okay so for this question you can answer it configuring oracle rack for high availability uh, what exactly mean by the high availability is it using the cluster based software also it is going to create a database services using oracle asm and network related configurations all these functionalities will work in our cluster where and each uh, what i can say topic or each component will provide individual functionality and features to that uh, high availability so cluster where will ensure that each node in monitoring and managed using cluster where see in rack if you are using more than two nodes okay suppose you are having one node two nodes three node rack all three nodes accessing single database okay cluster where software cluster where it means group of nodes act as a single node it all three together works and providing the functionality to manage this database and monitor this database okay all three nodes nodes are different node 1 node 2 node 3 but all three together working as a single service that we call it as a cluster where okay and the database services as i said if somebody trying to connect to this uh, any one of that like node and uh, for uh, sova applications i can use one service name ebs applications i can use one service name and obie or some other etc etc applications i can use different different service names okay each application will connect to this database using that service name asm as i said right storage purpose and networking ensuring your uh, interconnect if one node is fail another node existing connections will transfer through that inter node i'll explain that in our upcoming videos node eviction and uh, catch a fusion in practically i'll show uh, in the upcoming videos maybe another one or two videos uh, later i'll upload i mean i'll uh, share that video how we are going to create a database service that is also another question see here by using this srv ctl add service hyphen d database name hyphen s service name and uh, which instance you are going to add the service names simple give that instance name if you are using three node give the all three node in three instances if you are using four node give the all four instances that's it the basic connection in that way we are going to create the database service okay next question what is oracle global cache and its significance in rack uh, cache means it's temporarily storage a temporary memory related thing right global cache is used in rack to coordinate accessing data blocks between the different uh, nodes node 1 and node 2 is there so if one one user connected through node 1 okay 
this is node one and this is node two. One user connected to this database using this node one and node two. He's trying to update something. Okay, employee salary is going to update it. If you want to update, you'll bring that to the memory level database buffer cache location. There, it is going to update it. Old value and new values will be there. I mean, at a time, another user connected to through the node two and trying to access the same employee table. At that time, the lock will be happen to particular block. Okay, or else, uh, at the time of user is trying to access that block. This connection is this node has been evicted. At that time, this block is moving from this node to here, and the same user can able to update or uh, do the modifications from this node. Okay, interconnection. So that will happen in the uh, rack. At that time, our global cache will help on that part. See, that's where user in rack coordinating the access. Accessing the data blocks between the different nodes, it ensures that all instances in a cluster have a consistent view of data. It helps locking and the data consistency improve the performance. These two are the functionalities which helps uh, by using this global cache option. So we can able to view this. I think uh, this view may not work. Uh, try by using different ways. Uh, this is not somewhere I got this thing, but it is not accurate. Okay. I'll share it in another video for this. This may not work. Okay. Next question. What is the use of uh, CRS CTL command and SRV CTL? In my previous video, I shared SRV CTL uh, for um, what I can say easy way. I'm going to share that SRV CTL commands also here. CRS CTL will manage and monitor uh, the cluster resources, cluster resource services we can use this command. If you want to start your cluster, stop your cluster services, we can use CRSCTL. If you want to check the status of the cluster resources, we can use CRSCTL, okay? All Oracle cluster way related services, we can able to start it, stop it, and check the status by using this CRSL command. You can use this command or else. CRSCTL starts CRS also, we can use the command. Either that and this, mostly we can use this command. <clears throat> from the root user okay not the normal user and if you want to check the cluster status you can use hash crs ctl check crs this is the command we can use to check all the cluster related services and other things let me check cluster okay here it may not because we need to go to the specific location. Okay. Grid home where it is running. If you want, I'll check it. Cat ATC for our tab entries. I can get the grid home location bin from here. CRS CTL. Check CRS will. Check the Oracle High Ability Services online and synchronization services and the CRSS online event manager. All four demands are the main demands in our rack. All are up and running. If it is offline, we need to restart it. SRV CTL, so is a service control utility. If you want to start, stop, and check the status of your database and the listeners, we can use SRV CTL. Okay. Also, we can use for our um, ASM related, like if you want to start, stop ASM, specific node, we can use SRV CTL command. Okay. Uh, that's all about uh, this video, guys. Uh, in a future I'm going to upload related to performance tuning on our rack. Okay, thank you.